capital C, creating of intercompany for non subledger that is sending of the details directly to GL. Transactions outbound, it's the same form, same screen. The only difference would be let me just close other forms. So the only difference would be to select a transaction type where in invoicing is not allowed. So the transaction type is intercompany journal. Initiator same will use the same example Reliance Telecom. So the other important thing is for the intercompany journals. Okay, your customer supplier association required details are not required. True. Am I right? No, no it's required. It's not required. You are passing an intercompany general, you are passing directly from AGS to GL, then why do you require your customer supplier association? Customer supplier associations are required only for the transaction types wherein you are uh, uh, wherein you are trying to create your AP and AR invoices. If they, if your requirement is not to create an AP or AR invoice, system will not even check if there are any intercompany, uh, if there are any, uh, what do you call, uh, customer supplier association exist in the background. Oh, okay, okay. So we're talking about the customer supplier association, but ideally when the journal is posted, it will go with the same entries, like from 04 to 03. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll show you those entries here. Yeah. So that means there could be a scenario wherein, like in this case, you, you can create inter, uh, customer supplier association between these two, okay? But for all other intercompany, uh, for all other legal entities, just assign, uh, create them as the, uh, like classify them as the intercompany organizations in the first step, whatever I had mentioned, and then you can start entering a transaction between these two, between these two, and between these two, okay? Because now your yeah. corresponding AP and AR is not required to be set up, so major part of your setup is not required there. So you can just uh, create, classify them as the intercompany organizations, and then you can create the journal, uh, the intercompany transactions from AGIs. Okay. So, so if that is the case, then always you can do like this, right? I mean, the customer uh, supplier, uh, unless you want to record them somewhere and uh, you want the uh, uh, money to flow between the companies, you, you can do this anyway, any time, right? Okay, so from a legal, uh, from a law perspective, if you are selling something, okay, between two different legal entities, okay? Mm. Okay, law says that mm. you need to have the AP and AR invoice. AP and AR invoice are legal documents. Okay. In those cases, you need to definitely uh, use as a transaction type which generates an AP and AR invoice. And other scenarios mm -hmm. where you are doing a cross charging, cross allocations, moving the expense from one account to another account, those kind of scenarios. Okay. Those kind of scenarios which doesn't require any kind of an AP and AR invoice, which are kind of a manual kind of an adjustment kind of transactions, you need to use the intercompany journal transaction type. Okay. okay. Okay, so same uh, with say 55,000. Currency. Initiator accounting. This is uh, who is the initiator reliance telecom, right? Yeah, okay. So take an example. This is a scenario wherein I am actually cross charging or moving some rent expenses from this company to another company. So I will select a rent. So it's not mandatory that I should be selecting a kind of a revenue account here. Rent expense. So it is credit 55,000. Again, you can get into different permutations and combination. You can have one initiator, multiple recipients. You cannot have multiple recipients and multiple initiator. You can have one initiator and multiple recipients. One initiator, one recipient, multiple lines here. So you can click on place and you can add multiple lines. There are so many permutations and combinations. This is all uh, also Arvind, can we have a, 
see for example if you have a different uh, operating unit uh, like other than um, oil and gas for us uh, you have another operating unit also okay so for that uh, we, for approvals can you have different approvals for different operating units okay so whatever i had shown you the standard functionality okay you can also for all other requirements like if it's a complex requirements or whatever again you can use ame so in our current client we have got some kind of a uh, peculiar kind of a uh, requirement so we have integrated your approval with the ame so as you know that in ame you can write whatever the rules which you want so that is possible yeah. based on your requirement you can write your ame rules but the, i mean this is a reg, i mean kind of a regular uh, uh, approach only right see because for for different operating units you, you can have different teams sitting in different locations mm -hmm. so uh, so in in that case if you if you create one uh, intercompany transaction mm -hmm. from say from telecom from telecom and one line to oil and gas and one line say so reliance software okay okay so that okay so, so if that is a if that is a scenario it's a pretty straightforward we can do with the standard functionality itself okay if you create here okay initiatory say reliance telecom first recipient is uh, reliance oil and gas second recipient is say reliance textiles and third recipient is reliance software okay mm -hmm. as i said that your approval is at a transaction level not at a batch level okay so that means first line will go to approval to say rohit rohit has got an access to approve uh, reliance textiles second line is a reliance oil and gas it is a niranjan it goes to niranjan and third line is say you mm -hmm. it comes to you okay and the approval is at a line level or at, at a kind of a transaction level okay there could be a scenario where like one batch can have three different transactions and out of these three different transaction first transaction is approved by rohit this goes to ar second and third are still not at approved it will be still lying in the AGIs itself. That is possible because system is maintaining the uh, approval status at the transaction level, not at the batch level. And even your AR invoices or AP invoices are created at the transaction level, not at the batch level. Okay. okay. And if, say, for example, if line, if transaction number two is rejected, it is rejected. Okay. And one. Okay. One and three are approved. Okay. Uh, so how do you maintain this i mean does it show up somewhere in the reports yeah so if say one is approved two is rejected third is rejected of course you can run a report in the i'll show you that particular report in the report you will be able to see the details but from a system perspective one is approved it gets created as an ar and ap invoice two is rejected it okay. goes nowhere three is approved it gets created an ar and ap invoice okay so the creation of ar and ar ap invoice is at a transaction level okay not at the batch level so there is no okay. problem one particular batch can have multiple uh, transactions and out of multiple transactions can be, some can be approved and some can be rejected those which are approved gets created as ar and ap invoice those which are rejected will be in a status of rejected in the agis itself and they will not move anywhere okay okay, okay. So, so this batch number is only at the agis level exactly. and uh, the transactions are at the recipient level uh, i mean See, uh, I mean, in the other words, not, uh, I mean, it's not speaking, exactly but, that particular level, but still there are links wherein you can go to the AGIS uh, for the batch, whatever is approved. I mean, as far as this is concerned, for this particular first transaction, still the particular first transaction has got a reference to this particular batch, am I right? So, okay, you yes. go to AR, run some of your queries or reports, you will be able to see this particular transaction, and for this particular transaction, you will be able to see this particular transaction number or transaction ID and this batch ID. For this, you will not be able to okay. see the records in AR. Third one, hmm. you will be able to see this particular batch number uh, or batch ID or transaction ID. Okay, you will not be able to see only second one. Okay. Okay. Okay, now the batch, whatever we have created earlier is 54. Okay. Uh, for the intercompany journal, it is auto approved because we have said that manual approval is no. So I did not log in as Rohit. So automatically it is approved okay yeah. now go to agis as it's already approved run another program so earlier we have seen two programs transfer transactions to payables transfer transaction to receivables now transfer transaction to general ledger yeah. that's the name of the program
and the GL date is uh, 14th of October. Again, run general input as yes. Okay. If you say run general input as no, again it will go and sit in your interface table, GL interface table. Yeah. So by default, I think it it has given as no. Uh, but for for AP and AR programs, they have given a by default value as yes. So in our current client, we have uh, went to the standard program in the sysadmin. Sys we have changed this particular default value as run general input as yes. Again, once this is done, you can click on output. You will be able to see that status has transferred. And once the general import is completed, you can go into the GL and check the general entry. While it is running, I'll go to GL. General Ledger, Reliance USD, go to journals, enter. Okay, you can get the general batch name from this particular output, or you can use your normal criteria of uh, sources global intercompany created today but you need to wait for this particular program to be it's completed okay okay you can see this particular thing okay. and the interesting interesting thing is you should be able to see the agis batch number okay. in the journal name okay mm -hmm. so you can see some naming convention general agis batch name source okay uh, the source is general uh, global intercompany usd is the uh, functional currency or sorry usd is the currency of the ajs batch and uh, conversion rate type and date and here also system use some logic to get that particular batch name so click on review general here you are able to see four lines in the same single general so any reason why we are able to see four lines in the same single general Uh, for this hmm? because when you say four lines so we have entered uh, their uh, what do you call uh, this this part and this part system has generated the intercompany receivables and intercompany payables and so totally there are four lines okay and we are at a ledger level in gl okay these two fall under the same ledger okay and hence you are able to see all the four lines in the same journal had it been a scenario where it's a agis intercompany general between this and this then there should have been two journals one general two lines another general two lines because these two are falling under different ledgers okay is that clear pradeep mm -hmm. not exactly so okay I mean, we are saying because this responsibility is having only access to Reliance USD Ledger, we are seeing the four lines. Had it okay. been between uh, 0, 3, and 5, because we have only access to USD Ledger, we don't see the journal under CA Ledger. No, no, it's not only the access. Okay, the thing is, huh? you can see it's not only the access. The th thing is, if that is a scenario between uh -huh. Reliance Textiles and say Reliance uh, Canada, uh, what is that? Uh, Reliance software, which is falls under Canada system will create two journals one general for usd ledger another general for the canada ledger am i right because if you see in the yeah. general structure there is a ledger here so the first i mean for this maybe for, the, for these two lines it will be under reliance usd ledger and then if you check the another general the ledger name will be reliance canada ledger and you will be able to see another two lines okay okay yeah. And this is a scenario wherein we are entering a journal between two different uh, company codes which are falling under the same ledger system has created this. Okay. And now you can uh, even ask a question as to why should I go into that particular pain of uh, entering of AJS batch, get it approved and uh, run the particular program to push it to jail. I can very well pass this particular entry here. Okay. This is only just uh, under one single ledger. So to answer you that particular question, the answer is yes. If you want to do not want to take that particular pain you can just come here and uh, enter this particular journal okay this is okay, okay as long as as long as it's a journal between these two company codes but in a real life world there could be such kind of intercompany journals which are directly pushed to gl between say this and this okay or in a same single journal you want to enter a intercompany journal between this and this okay this being an initiator recipient could be this recipient could be this and recipient could be this 
so wherein you are trying to send the data in a single batch to multiple ledgers so that is pretty straightforward and easy if you do it from ajs rather than doing it from the different ledgers okay, okay. And, also, and also if you go with an ajs you will have a proper approval from the corresponding uh, uh, what do you call the persons of these particular ledgers or recipients of these ledgers okay yeah. yeah and 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 arvin just one i mean maybe something out of topic so uh, you you worked for oil and gas right so you know iba system ibs yes yeah mm -hmm. so this ags is related to i mean almost the same functionality as the IG, uh, ibs right uh i think so because like it's so it was almost a uh, almost four or five years ago so i don't remember exactly ibs but uh, i think if you're asking me i think yes they are using that IBS system to pass this kind of intercompany transactions in that particular system and then pushing that to GL or something like that, if I remember it correctly. Right. I mean, it's like we send the uh, AR invoices and then they receive them and they send the receipts back to us. Also, yes, the AP. It's more or less the same thing, but I'm not sure if there are a kind of any other additional features in IBS because, uh, because of which they are not uh, willing to use uh, AGIS. Okay. 